Hello, I am Kavak Jones and welcome to my first expedition. Today I am going to take you to Litomirtis underground Nazi factory codenamed Richard. Richard is a main located in the north of Czech Republic where limestone was extracted for hundreds of years. In 1925, for example, almost 50 railway carriages of bricks were produced every month. Why do I mention it? Because for me as an explorer it means only one thing, a lot of underground excavations. Let me introduce you to the hugeness of Richard. That's Richard during the Second World War, and this part was dug after the war. In 1945, Nazi troops abandoned Richard and the Nerby Labor Company Tomurice. After that, the new Czech government confiscated materials and machines to use them to rebuild the country and industry after the war. Two years later, just like before the war, extraction was resumed and even more passages were dug. Extraction was abandoned in 1963 because it was no longer profitable. But that's not the end of the story about Richard because in early 60s part of the excavations were changed to nuclear waste deposit about which I'm going to tell a bit more later. Finding the entrance was not easy but when I saw this gate hidden behind some trees in the middle of the forest I knew I was in the right place and finally could get inside. As I got inside I saw a long tunnel with a brick wall at the end of it. Luckily there was a hole in it. Behind this last obstacle everything looked totally different. There were no signs of concrete reinforcements, everything could collapse at any minute. I was actually walking on the vaulting level with my feet 2 meters higher than the ground level, which was pretty creepy. The further I went, the tired it got. Everything was so collapsed that I didn't even see the ramifications on the sides. After this tight section I finally saw a bigger space. This part was not so badly crumbled because of massive concrete arches crossing each other beyond my head. I decided to go on and skip the ramifications. I knew that the deepest part was near. But to my surprise, the tunnel on the map ended, but the cave still lit deeper and deeper inside the mountain. Compared to the tunnels before, this one was huge and complicated. I got lost very quickly because literally everything around me looked the same. But instead of backing off, I just kept on moving on. Somehow I enjoyed this feeling of being lost there. I can't even explain why. As I later found out, these parts were dug after the Nazis retreated, so they wouldn't have been on all German maps I took with me. As I was going further and further, I faced numerous cave ins. Despite being lost, I decided to explore the biggest one and check to see if there was something behind. This collapse was colossal, after a couple of steps I was already far beyond the vault level and still could get higher. I saw fresh stone pieces all over the place, I was getting even tired and warmer. I didn't know because of the temperature of adrenaline. Later I learned that it was probably low oxygen in the air because the afterward excavations were not ventilated at all. After an exhausting climb I finally got to the end, where the big adit changed to a small chink between floor and the top. Luckily everything ahead was buried so I could eventually go back or at least try to. Going back down was even harder than climbing because every stone I stepped on moved and it was very easy to slip. But it was much easier to breathe down there, so I went to my second destination, nuclear waste deposit. Somehow I made it to the main tunnel and turned left, into the assumed connection with Richard to the deposit. Frankly speaking, I timidly hoped somehow get inside and see the waste. What I saw there amazed me. Restored tunnels were all around me. Every reinforcement was freshly painted and even the floor was smooth and flat. Even though everything was maintained in a good condition, on the ground I saw stones that fell from the top. At this moment I felt this mountain literally living and still slowly moving, but not slowly enough to consider it safe. Again, I ignored the ramparts which were probably changed to social rooms during the Second World War and I moved on. Further on I believed more strongly that I may actually get in, but suddenly a strong massive crate with even stronger gate behind it brought me back to the reality. But luckily for me, and for you, there was yet another possibility to get in. This deposit used to be open for visitors and I found some pictures showing it from inside. First of all the entrance was like a wealthy cousin of the gate I used to enter in. Inside all tunnels are restored and the floor is smooth and straight. You probably wonder what does the nuclear waste look like? I have to disappoint you, it's just a barrel. 200 liter barrels sunk in another 400 liter barrel. The gap between the barrels is filled with concrete and inside everything from nuclear power plants and hospitals that became contaminated 
from close to radiated medical equipment. 25,000 of such a bottle stored really 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 deep in the ground. Ok, so let's go back to exploring. I decided to head to a ventilation shaft. That's the only place in the whole complex where it's possible to see how deep it actually is. I crawled into an old air pipe and then through a second air hole I got to the main tunnel. I think that was a machine room for events moving air in or out through the shaft. Today no signs of the engines remain and to that the room was partly flooded so I had to find another way around. Just behind it I encountered the shaft. 77 meters under the ground. To be honest, between 5 and 77 meters there is literally no difference. If it collapses you would feel it all the same. The next chamber had almost smooth ceiling. I was told that's one of the most dangerous places in a whole complex with an outstanding collapse rate. I went through in a total silence since I heard a lot about explorers seeing stones fall and that this place is constantly changing. As I finally got through I found myself in the chamber number 120. And by the way, original markings on the walls were really helpful in orientating since the same numbers were on my map. A few empty rooms further we found an exposition of things made by local explorers still digging here and there hoping to find something. They are also restoring some buried passages so there is no such a thing as an actual map of Richard. Literally pumped array, constantly collapsing, moving, sliding and being buried and dug out again. Meanwhile, I reach my next destination. A place where the huge pressure is visible more than anywhere. The pillar chambers are located on the edge of accessible tunnels. Everything behind it is buried and unknown. What was supposed to be there is still a mystery. Nowhere else were such reinforcements built. Some people believe that some vibrating machinery worked there. The pressure was so high that every pillar literally subsided underneath ground level and some of them even burst. This place will collapse soon just like the twin chamber. It's a proper place to paraphrase famous Polish poet, let us explore underground now, they perish so fast. Behind the chamber some locals tried to dig through the lock collapse in order to access further excavations, but I decided not to squeeze in because nothing around was stable and I knew that there was nothing interesting behind since no one had managed to get through yet. Bullshit, I did the completely opposite thing. This, there is nothing stable around there anyway and I had to ascertain by myself if there was something behind. Obviously just as I expected, there wasn't. But at least I can say that I saw it with my own eyes. In 1943, Albert Speer ordered to halt the extraction and hand the mines to the military authorities. Nazis immediately entered the undergrounds, brought thousands of prisoners to rebuild it and just 5 months later the first company was able to move in. Auto Union Hemnitz Action Gesellschaft, known today as Audi, moved into Richard 1 in order to manufacture 24 liter Maybach engines used in Tiger and Panther tanks. Later on other companies, for example Osram, moved in. It's worth mentioning that in 1978 two local teenagers entered Richard with paper torches and as the light burned out they got trapped underground with, without light, food and water. Rescue team needed 48 hours to find them. When they found them the rescuer told them just one thing. You are so stupid. And they were, I agree. But I think most of us at age of 16 might do something that stupid or worse. I for example walk inside drain channel system under my city without even checking the weather forecast. I was 14 and my lamp was the cheapest one. And it was my only one. But let's go back to the present. 
This place in Richard is another example of the devastating influence of time for underground. I wanted to get into the tunnel beneath the collapse, but the bulk of the collapse had smashed it as well. Luckily I found the picture of this passage from a couple of years ago. This place is literally moving with the time. I'm not overreacting, couple of meters further I encountered this stone, hanging below my head ready to collapse at any minute. After getting through the collapse I was back in the main tunnel, heading to the exit. But I didn't want to leave although I was already 4 hours underground. I was eager to explore since I knew I may not have the possibility to visit it again. As I reached the flooded generator room I turned right to explore a parallel tunnel. After getting through a couple of partitions I faced the wall. Only small shink above led to the other side. Of course I had to go in. Without even thinking to find an easier way around. The partition wall was doubled with 30cm space between, which made it even harder to get through. But it was a lot of fun and I did it. Long time ago I discovered that I feel surprisingly comfortable in such a narrow and tight spaces and getting in and through satisfies me. Sometimes when I see a cool passage I'm even excited to crawl in. I think it's something opposite of claustrophobia. Of course, after squeezing I found two alternative ways, but no matter. What I found behind was a labyrinth of a brick rooms crossed with thick supporting walls. This was the first time I had seen wooden supports laying around. Up to now I saw only concrete and brick. According to my research this place used to be the stable. It is said that most of the horses working underground had never seen the sky. Behind it I found a borrowed vaulting tunnel. I, I was probably in the oldest part of the mine. Notice that side walls are scratched and worn out. Decades of mine trolleys driven there rubbed against the walls. Barred vaults were built only in unstable sections, that's why it, this one ends up so suddenly. Generally I have to admit that's a nice crossover of 19th and 20th century mining technology. I decided to turn left, since I knew I may find an entrance to an inaccessible tunnels. Just before the collapse I found the second exposition, but I didn't pay so much attention to it because I had already seen the shink. Tight and narrow, just as I like. Unfortunately this passage was collapsed just like previous ones and I had only one remaining to check. I came back to the main tunnel, slowly heading towards the exit. What I noticed was that each excavation in this oldest part is much lower than the previous ones. Also, the stones were a bit harder and more stable, which in connection with lower caves gave me a good feeling of being a bit safer. Or maybe after so many hours underground I just got used to the atmosphere. I was like a kid in an amusement park, going in every possible passage regardless size. This room for example, with its massive steel doors inside was probably the explosive storage. In every mine this place is located near the entrance and heavily protected. I also encountered this small shaft. It was plugged and didn't ventilate anymore, but the entrance was so close that he didn't have to. The next interesting place was this tight entrance. I have no idea why it was so tight when the tunnel behind was much bigger. Anyway, at the end of the tunnel was sealed off with a solid concrete wall. Why was it there? I have no idea, it's just another secret of the Richard Underground. I decided to head towards the exit. I was hungry and that's always the best motivation. But just before the exit I saw the steel gate I had skipped before. It came to me that I had already seen it somewhere, on the discovery where Don Wildman host of the cities of the underground had explored Richard. In my opinion it is currently the best underground commercial documentary made. I consider them as the best in this field, although they totally suck when it came to the lighting they had. As I'm there, I would like to briefly show you how did this entrance look before. This picture showed this place shortly after Nazi troops abandoned it. Notice that I am in exactly in this position now. After a bit, somewhere in the 60s, Czech government rebuilt the entrance and it looked the same until today. 
Anyway, I walked through this tunnel and noticed a small niche on the right, probably a place for a small chapel. I still had one last thing to check out. <laughs> last possible passage to an inaccessible tunnel was just behind the corner. If there would be a way through, I would totally forget about my hunger. Unfortunately, the last passage was also not available, but notice that this one was not collapsed. The vault is in a very good condition and it looks like somebody just filled this tunnel out with the mining product, as to not let anybody through. It's really suspicious that each passage leading towards undiscovered excavations is collapsed or buried. Who did it and what is supposed to remain unseen, nobody knows, and looking at the conditions of the undergrounds, nobody will ever find out. That's pretty much all I wanted to present you about Richard, and despite the length of this video, it's just an introduction. There is still so much to explore. I hope you enjoyed my adventure and if you would like to see more of my underground expeditions, please subscribe my channel. Don't hesitate to leave a comment, either positive or negative, I'm eager to improve the quality of my videos and adjust it to you, their viewers. And if you would like to explore this or another place with me, let me know and I will see what we can do about that.